Hi everyone, so we're going to start with the back of the car just because that's where most of the major electrical components are. We have the rear box which has two main connections for the wire harness. One a breakout to the front box which we'll show later and the second one to the accumulator which is our tractive systems and HV battery. Our battery connects on the right side to the motor controller motor controller connects to the motor from the left side with these three cables. If you see orange, that's tractive systems. So these are the SSOK lamps that are tucked away over here. Uh, those are on when safety systems are okay. Uh, other breakouts that we have, we have the TSOL, which is the tractive systems active light. That light is up here and it's on whenever tractive systems is on. Then we have the TSMS, which is the Tractive Systems Master Switch. It's a switch for TS. Tractive Systems equals high voltage. So whenever you hear TS, that's high voltage. So this is the grounded low voltage battery for our system. We typically refer to that as GLV. Um, it's really big, as you can probably tell, because we don't have a DC-DC converter on our car. If we did, then we could convert from the high voltage in our high voltage battery down to the low voltage needed to charge this battery. And then we could charge it while we're running from this very high capacity battery. But since we don't have one of those, we have this big old GLV battery. And this outputs 12 volts. From here, there's a little fuse right here that is uh, 50 amps. From here, it comes down along the frame and then up into the rear box. So the power flows into this fuse board here and then is distributed to the rest of the vehicle. So let's just go through each of the different branches and talk about where they go and what they do. So first up, we have the radiator fan, and this comes out of the fuse box, then into the relay on this rear I.O. board, and then back to our radiator fan on our radiator. Next, we have pump, which comes out of the fuse box, once again into a relay on rear I.O., and then into our water cooling pump. Then we have accumulator fans. They do the same thing, out of the fuse box, into a relay, and then down into the fans that cool our accumulator. Next, brake light, which also comes into a relay and then out to the brake light on the rear of the vehicle, and we use that relay to control so that the brake light is only on when we're braking. Next up, we have rear I.O. Um, this is kind of the central control board for all of the fans, I.O. functions like that on the vehicle, and it's located right here. It's the purple board. Uh, it also, connected to it, has this IMU, Inertial Measurement Unit, and GPS. Uh, next, down, bottom one on this row, is the inverter. Uh, this is just power to the inverter, so it comes straight from the fuse box to the power inverter power connector that then comes back and into our inverter. Going down the right side, we have the LEDs, which currently don't have a fuse in them and this comes out to our underglow. Then the accumulator, which comes out here and powers all of our general accumulator stuff. All of the GLV stuff that's happening in the accumulator is all getting powered off this fuse. Then, on this last one, we have the front box, and that controls everything on the front of the car. So, the dashboard is on that, as well as the front I.O. and speakers. So this is the front box. It controls the inverter as well as talking to the pedals, the brake sensors, and the dashboard. So looking down at it, first we've got this power distribution area on these terminal blocks here. And that distributes 12 volt power to everything on the whole board. Next, we have the actual front I.O. board here. And that has a teensy on it like the rear I.O. does. And it communicates with the ready to drive button, as well as the ready to drive sound, it has a CAN interface, and then an interface for the brake pressure sensors and the pedal. Um, this board then processes the signals that it's getting from the pedals and the ready to drive button and the brake sensors, and then decides what to signal to send to the inverter. Over here, we have our Raspberry Pi that controls our dashboard. It also has this nice little LTE modem so that we can do telemetry off-board. Uh, everything on this is connected up to the dashboard through this cable here. Then, it has a CAN interface. 
I'm going to start back at this is the Raspberry Pi. So this is the Raspberry Pi. It communicates with our dashboard and handles all of our dashboard tasks. All of the wires from it are routed down through this nice cable over to the physical actual dashboard piece. It has a CAN interface for talking to the rest of the car, as well as HDMI for talking to the display, and this nice LTE modem for talking to a base station. Then over here we have our speaker driver that theoretically, although it's not working right now, should drive the speakers that are on the side of the car, which run our ready to drive sound and can also play music and whatever you want. This is also plugged into the Pi so that the Pi can generate sounds. Over here we've got a little DC-DC converter for converting our 12 volts down to the 5 that the Pi wants. And over here we've got another little DC-DC converter for converting the 12 volts down to the 5 that the display wants. This is just a quick segment on how to attach and remove our two types of connectors. Over here we've got an HG30 connector and then here we've got a DTO4. So for the HG30 this one's a little bit tricky to, especially to put on, but you're just going to grab it around here and twist it counterclockwise like you're taking off a screw. And then when it pops off you can see that all the little sockets are in this side of the connector here, and then there's pins in the stationary side of the connector. Uh, to put it back on, what you're going to do is you're going to line up the little detents in here with the connector. Uh, on the connector, one of them is always facing, the big one is always facing either like down or sideways, but it's pretty much always at a 90 degree angle. So you're going to line those up, and then you're just going to start twisting it on as if it was a screw again, clockwise. And this can sometimes take a little bit of force, especially on some of the ones on the rear of the car. There's a lot of pins in them, and it can take quite a bit of force. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to twist it until there's a very clear visual indicator um, when you see a little pin in this little hole. For the DTO4s, uh, you're just going to push down this little locking bit and pull them straight out. This one's a lot more straightforward. And you can see, once again, there's sockets on the connector and then pins on the receptacle. So then to put them back in, you're just going to kind of stick it in and go until it clicks and you can visually see the locking bit move up. All right, so moving on to the next section, we're going to be talking about general safety with hand tools that you should be using whenever you're working with high voltage or tractive systems. Most of the time, those components, you're going to see orange cables in the vicinity, but not always. A lot of times you can be working with TS with very thin wires, especially if you work with the AMS. You'll notice that most of the tools you'll find a kilovolt rating somewhere on it. It'll be bright yellow or red and it'll say Nipex or Weha, praying that I'm pronouncing those brand names correctly. On top of that, you should be using high voltage safety gloves. They come in two layers. The first layer is the actual part that protects you from high voltage tractive systems, spicy voltage. The second layer is the leather, the leather cover that protects, it, that protects the insulator from getting nicked by general abrasion or wear over time. And then speaking of time, they do come with an expiration and they do have to be recertified. So make sure to occasionally double check those. Um, most companies professionally, they just buy them every six months and restock them. Uh, they also come in different sizes. If you can't find your size, talk to your product manager. And another important note is if you're using these high voltage uh, tweezers, keep in mind that they, are ins they have an outer coating for the insulation but it is still one continuous piece of metal, so you can short by touching these. Um, if you somehow get one on B+, plus, another one on B-, minus, uh, Godspeed. And that's most of it for these components. Um, if you think you're working with TS, please pull these out. If you're working anywhere near the accumulator, definitely pull these out.